Good day, everyone, and welcome to a quick overview of our Fortify On Demand solution. Now, before we jump in into Fortify On Demand, I would like to go over a few slides, just more to set, set the stage, but also show um, the benefits for the Fortify On Demand tool set. Now, when looking at Fortify On Demand, you have a single platform that provides all AppSec needs, um, either providing SaaS testing, where we take a look at your source code, see where team members may have unintentionally written vulnerable code. We can also look at um, those third-party dependencies that are utilized within the code bases, and we can run simulated attacks against the deployed version of your application um, when looking at DAS testing. So with Fortify On Demand, you would see that we feed nicely into your SDLC. And what better way to accomplish this than by integrating into platforms that are within your ecosystem. Um, so you would see multiple tools within the dev space from um, developer IDEs to build servers, to defect trackers, to multiple re repos and all. So as we've taken a look at this, let's go ahead and jump in into Fortify On Demand. Now I'm currently faced with the Fortify On Demand login portal. With this portal, users have their unique credentials and organizations are provided a unique tenant ID. It is one of the security measures we have in place to ensure that the tenant is safe. Now, you can utilize other measures to bolster up your tenant um, and things that come to mind are two-factor authentication. You can utilize single sign-on or even set up IP restrictions to where your tenant is accessible within certain IP ranges. Now, access into your tenant is role-based. Um, by default, we have six unique um, roles that are available within the tool with the ability for you to create custom roles. Currently, I will be logging in into this tenant as an admin and will be able to view all applications that have been onboarded in. You would see that first and greeted with a dashboard providing a full overview um, not just the vault of all applications that have been onboarded, but also for metrics from the scans. You can take a look at my portfolio summary, entitlement consumption, so I can see what's left. I can even take a look at trends as I run my scans time over time. And I can see if I have um, passed my compliance um, set in either a pass or a fail based off of the number of applications that I have in, in here. Now, let's go ahead and take a quick peek into the application section. And with the application section, now I have that overview of the apps that have been onboarded in. I will be able to get quick metrics on the results generated from the scan. Based on the policies, I can see if I have a pass or a fail. And I can easily see the types of scans that have been initiated, be it a static, a dynamic, open source, or if we define our application as a mobile application, I'm also able to view results from our mobile scans. Now, let's go ahead and take a deep dive into one of these result sets. Now, as I go ahead and drill in, you would see for this specific application, I have three different releases, but let's go ahead and focus around the version 10 of this application. And if I drill down now into the issues that have been generated from, from the scan, um, you would see that those issues range um, from critical going down to no and total down to about 208 issues. You would see that we also do provide the ability to group, um, which comes in very handy, especially when it comes to remediation. Um, you may have a practice to where you remediate based off of the top 10 as an example. So being able to provide a grouping by default and all the issues identified will map to the relevant top 10 requirements. There are multiple attributes that are available within this grouping dropdown. So you can see attributes for PCI and also attributes for state. But let's go ahead and go back into the category view. And our focus now is around the critical issues that have been identified, of which we currently have 95 issues that range from credential management issues going down to XML external entity injection. Now, as we take a look at each one of these categories, we can go ahead and expand into either one of them. And once we go ahead and select, 
and you'll notice that we have a multi-tab environment right in, in the middle, providing us details for each one of these issues that have been identified. First, you're greeted with a detailed summary where we are providing details as to why this issue is relevant, but also bringing in methods and functions and highlighting lines of code within the summary. Now, if you go ahead and take a look at the diagram section as an example, depending on the complexity of, of the issue, we will go ahead and provide a visual representation of the analysis trace showing you how the issue moves through your app. If we flip into the code section, we have snippets of the affected areas of, of your code base, and we'll also provide a full trace where it is interactive. So as you click on each one of these steps, you're taken directly to the line of code. So you're able to move through the application like the vulnerability did itself. And lastly, on the recommendations will be tips and tricks on how to resolve the issues. We'll also provide you with references to organizations and consortiums for best practices. And we can offer an interactive training session by an integration with a third party vendor called Secure for Warrior. Potentially, the aim here is to provide all the information needed to resolve any of these issues that I identified within your application. So as we review this data that has been provided, now we can move into the audit section where we can assign some of our, um, I, I would say, remediation attributes. Now, a good benefit of the Fortify on Demand tool is it isn't monetized by the number of users. So we do um, encourage you to bring users into the platform, provide them with credentials. Because now, as those issues are being identified, you can easily assign them to different team members within your org for remediation. Now, as you go ahead and review this issue, please note that there's the ability to change the severity level to better align with your organization standards. There also is the ability to suppress issues that may be seen deemed either as a non-issue or as an accepted risk um, within your, your code, code base. Now, since I am logging in as an admin, a lot of these functionalities are open. Now, remember I had mentioned earlier that there are six predefined roles that are available within the tool with restricted access for each one. And you also do have the ability to create custom roles. So if I log in as one of those restricted users, then areas like these that are seen critical to remediation will be grayed out. Um, so things like um, the auditor status, the severity status being grayed out are out of review and reserved strictly for admins and security leads. You would notice that as we scroll down, there's the ability also to submit a bug, and this provides an integration to different um, defect tracking tools, be it Jira, Bugzilla, Azure Boards, ServiceNow, and many more. Since we offer an integration into um, our open source tools, you would see that with an open source scan fully initiated within the platform, you would also have open source results as part of your static results findings too. You can go ahead and select either one of the issues and you will be presented also with rich data supporting it. You would see with this dependency that's been highlighted, um, we're currently on a version 2.8.0. We have a safe version of 2.1.6. And right at the bottom, we're provided with community held data showing the number of contributors that actually that actively contribute in, into the platform, showing also giving us a popularity of this dependency and also giving us a scale for security. Now, if we go ahead and move a little bit forward into dependency, we can also take a look at the dependency tree depending on the particular package or the particular dependency that's available um, for this scan. Now, I've shown mostly the static results and have shown also the open source results within the platform. Now, if we take a step back quickly and move into 
looking at one where we have dynamic results, um, then you would see that there is a lot of similarity within the UI. Um, in, in, in that, you're pro provided with a detailed summary. You're also provided with recommendations on how to resolve the issue. But where you would notice a unique difference here is since it's a dynamic scan, we are providing you with a HTTP request and response. We will provide you with header and parameter data for this specific scan and all the information that is relevant either to recreate the issue locally or validate the fix. Now, as we have viewed a lot of this um, vulnerabilities that have been identified and we've made all the assignments from the audit section here, this will be a good time now to come in and generate reports. Now we can go into the reporting mechanism that's available within the application itself, where we provide the ability for users to schedule reports to be auto-generated. So as an example, we can say for every static scan that we run and for every dynamic or mobile scan, depending on how the application is defined, we need a report generated, which is called a static comprehensive. And I've selected a dynamic comprehensive for that. And we can also have this emailed out to multiple recipients within the tool. And all this can be done by either utilizing the default templates or the custom templates that we've made available within the tool. And as we look at customizing your reporting template, you would need to go to the reporting tab on the top layer, click on report templates, and you would see the ability to create that new template. Um, go ahead and provide a definition. Select um, some of the filters needed, like if we would want to view um, a static result and maybe focus on our criticals and highs. We can even focus on only the new issues, not existing ones. And we can go as far as selecting specific vulnerability categories that we need highlighted within the report. Once, the, once we've selected our filters, we can come in, select the modules that we would like to use to build out this report layout. So if we take a look at one real quick, I can go ahead and select a title page. We can also add an executive summary, which will be over at the top. I can also add an issue breakdown, and we can also add an issue detail. Building out the report layout, once I save this, it becomes a template that can be utilized on an ad hoc basis to either generate report or we can automate this by scheduling reports to be generated and emailed out to multiple recipients. And to provide a quick sample of our reports, I have here a quick um, static comprehensive. And with the static comprehensive report, we are showing first an executive summary of the scan showing a high level info of issues that have been identified in their respective severity categories, showing issues that were most prevalent, and also showing those in terms of how they've been assigned within the portal. You can see we have a one star which represents a fail and we can also see the types of scans that have been initiated. And as we scroll on within the report, we will get different breakdowns. We can also provide mappings to multiple compliances and best practices before we go ahead and provide you with details for each of the issues that have been identified here. This marks the end of our overview. Um, look forward to seeing you all on other videos we have coming. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.